name is Cole Peterson and I'm one of the owners of this place which is Caravan the Tiny House Hotel. My wife and I started 2013 and we're in Portland, Oregon. We have six tiny houses on wheels here. All of them are one of a kind, handmade uh, tiny houses on wheels and they're all locally made in the region. Welcome to the amazing Mysterium. This is our newest tiny house. It arrived about three months ago in early April and we're really thrilled to have this one here because it's our smallest tiny house and it really showcases what's possible with a very small amount of space. Uh, the Amazing Mysterium is 120 square feet. It was built by our friend Colin and he actually had built a similar one that was used on a quirky TV show and they made this funny sign called the Amazing Mysterium and we thought it was just kind of a fun whimsical way to add a new addition to Caravan that was really different than all the other ones. So we kept the sign, we kept the idea and then we just did some tweaking with Colin and he created this really beautiful space in our opinion, it's really remarkable that this is only 120 square feet because it sleeps four. It's got a kitchen table with big comfy chairs. There's two beds. The, day, the bed on the bottom floor is a couch that opens to a queen-sized bed, but the bed above is on a suspension, so you can just pull it down and it locks in place and then you release it and it rises up to meet the curved rooftop, which is a like a traditional Varda wagon. There's stained glass lining the rooftop um, and the Molly Croft window that we had um, custom made to match the quilts, which match the blanket that I knit to start kind of start the whole color process and worked with the quilter and sent her samples of my yarn and that was really fun. And um, we custom made the tiled the counter um, and then the bathroom in Mysterium is definitely our smallest bathroom. It's basically a wet bath, but it has a shower curtain separating the toilet and the shower. There's a lot of storage space in the Mysterium. So if you um, look at the closets, we have a space for big suitcases. We've got some bookshelves, um, water heater and, and all that is all uh, tucked away in the closets. And um, it's just a remarkable use of space. So guests have been really happy with it and we're really happy with it. And it's turquoise and black and gray and kind of fun and bright and hope you enjoy it. Most people have a really good experience. We get tons of good ratings and reviews and people love it. They love being on Alberta Street, which is this really cool neighborhood that in Portland that a lot of tourists don't even know about. Um, but because there's a hotel here, people stay here and they just end up spending their whole time just on Alberta Street alone, which is exactly what we want. Cause this is real, like uh, this is real Portland here. It's just like a great set of local stores that goes 20 blocks long, restaurants, bars, art shops, coffee shops, you name it. So people love it for that reason. But importantly, I think on a subtle level, what, what we hoped and what is happening is a lot of people come here who had no interest in tiny houses on wheels or who had a little bit of interest or intrigue about them. And they walk away feeling as though A, they could either live in a tiny house on wheels or B, they could downsize. And from my point of view, that is like a metric of success. Like if people feel as though I didn't realize I could possibly live in a smaller house and that would make sense. And like that is a huge, that is a huge like uh, accomplishment in terms of what the long-term impact of Caravan will be. Cause people will maybe not right away, but the next house that they live in, they might be able to downsize a little bit. And downsizing is important from a purely, you know, statistically environmental level. All right, so welcome to Pacifica. This uh, tiny house is one that we're very excited about. We got to work with Abel Zill of Zill Vardos up in Olympia, Washington, who we have, you know, had a tiny house crush on for a very long time because he is a very, very talented builder. And we are really excited to get to design with, with Abel a tiny house that is able to com accommodate our guests that use wheelchairs. So Pacifica is wheelchair accessible. All of the downstairs furn furniture is, um, we move some of the um, pieces of furniture out, like the stools, um, other things are on wheels. 
the bed on the bottom floor opens to a queen. So guests that use wheelchairs are able to navigate the downstairs easily. It's also built to be 10 feet wide, which is very unusual for a tiny house. To be able to be compliant on the road, tiny houses need to be 8'6", but Abel was able to get a variance to drive it down here to Caravan um, so that it could be a little bit extra wide. The shape of the loft and the roof is why we named it Pacifica, because it's got a curvy kind of feeling and we wanted to name it in honor of the Pacific Ocean. And um, it's actually hung off of a cable. So it's a suspended loft. It's a queen bed that sleeps two. Um, like all of our beds at Caravan, we have our quilts um, custom made by a, a wonderful quilt maker. And um, the view from the bed in Pacifica is pretty stunning. You get a chance to really see the full glory of the custom made stained glass that Abel works with a local stained glass maker in Olympia um, who created this beautiful green and purple palette. Pacifica has some features like the staircase on the bottom stair that is um, flips up so that um, if we have a guest who uses a wheelchair, they're able to navigate that edge of the staircase. The bathroom is wheelchair accessible, um, it has a bench. Above and beyond that, the design of Pacifica is just kind of feel like it's like a cathedral and it's curvy just based on the wavy feeling um, of the design. The sink and uh, countertop, are we were down in Mexico while Abel was finishing the build. So we were able to buy um, Talavera tile um, from Mexico and bring it back. And then I had a chance to tile the counter myself, which was really fun. And yeah, guests just love Pacifica because it's open. It's really light and colorful and just stunningly beautiful. And um, we're really thrilled to have it here at Caravan. Welcome to the Tandem. The Tandem is actually the only tiny house that is still a caravan four years later after we opened. It's one of the original tiny houses. We named it the Tandem because it has these bike parts that are metal kind of spokes and pieces of bikes and wheels and stuff that are in the framing around um, the Tandem. And it sleeps two and we thought that that would be just kind of a fun name for Portland for a very bike centric city. We think of it as the most traditional tiny house design. It's open. It's got a bed on the first floor that sleeps two. It, oh, it's, a, it's a day bed that opens to a king, actually. And then we have a queen bed up in the loft. Tandem, like all our tiny houses, features local art, local products. We, um, it's really important value to us to support the local community in terms of products and art and anything we can, any way we can. We opened up Caravan really thinking of it as a, you know, the bread and butter of the business is that it's a hotel. Just like any other hotel, it's filling the basic hotel functions, but that's really not why we did it. We didn't do it for that purpose. The reason we started Caravan was really because of, of my interest in kind of environmental issues that relate to small urban infill housing and Deb's issues in kind of beautiful, small, funky spaces and creating community. And so Caravan offers both of us like the opportunity to do really cool things with Caravan as a platform. And we now do kind of five core things, I'd say. One is the hotel. One is that we, we give tours of the hotel for people who are interested in Tiny House on Wheels. And so we do a lot of education that really starts off with Tiny House on Wheels and quickly bridges into accessory dwelling units, which is really my passion outside of the hotel. The third thing we do is we run a, the citywide ADU tour, which is the largest tour of accessory dwelling units anywhere in the world, which are small houses that are on foundations. They're not Tiny House on Wheels. You know, there's some overlap between Tiny House on Wheels and ADU. So we kind of use Tiny Houses somewhat as a gateway drug to introduce people to 
to AVUs. Then we also run the Caravan Campfire uh, Concert Series, so one of those is happening tonight. That's during the summer months. We have uh, a bonfire and people can bring their own food to barbecue and they listen to local music. So we're promoting local music and artists here, as well as having all of our tiny houses as the backdrop, which are all locally made. Um, <clears throat> and then we have um, our fifth kind of leg of the business is our teardrop trailer rental business. And so those are not tiny houses on wheels, they are not ADUs by any stretch, but they're just an, another kind of leg of caravan that allows people to actually go mobile with tiny houses. Unlike you guys who actually travel in tiny houses on wheels, most people don't. Um, and so we, you know, we oftentimes talk about that, that if you're interested in traveling, tiny houses on wheels may not actually be the right way to do that. You might want to think about a, a, a smaller thing. And so we offer that as a way for people to take advantage of the incredible scenery and incredible um, land that we have around Portland. Um, so those are kind of the five things that we do right now that kind of exemplify some of the values that we have with Caravan in terms of kind of um, using Caravan as a platform for education and advocacy around small housing and um, kind of supporting the local art community here. Kanga Blue is our largest tiny house. It's 170 square feet, so it's quite a bit bigger than our smallest tiny house, the Mysterium, which is 120 square feet. So this is Kanga Blue, and Kanga Blue is our largest tiny house at Caravan. It was built by our really dear friend, Ben, um, who's from Australia, and in a nod to his Australian heritage and roots, we decided to call it Kanga Blue. The blue is for the um, beetle kill uh, salvaged wood that we use on the walls. And Kanga Blue sleeps three people and it has a queen bed up in the loft and then it also has a twin bed down on the bottom floor. Um, it's a day bed that opens to a twin. It also has another loft that we use as a storage loft and the ladder is used on both lofts and they're two different heights so we have hooks at different levels and in different sizes so that the ladder can be used for both lofts, which is kind of cool. It also hangs up on the wall. Kanga Blue, as I said, it's our largest tiny house. It also has the least amount of built-in features, so it was purposefully left wide open. Um, we furnished it with local furniture um, that we you know, found around Portland, but it's really nice because it could be used in a lot of different ways because we don't have permanent built-in uh, furniture in here. And also it's uh, adorned with art by a local artist, Flora Boley, who hosts her participants stay at Caravan a few times a year when they do her art workshops. Like all of our tiny houses, Kanga Blue has hot running water, flush toilets, um, a kitchen with a microwave, a hot plate, organic fair trade coffee, some organic fair trade tea, and lots of amenities that we offer our guests. Alexis and Christian thank you very much for watching our video yes and subscribing <laughs> to our channel and don't forget to check out more tiny house stories and tours oh and don't forget to join us on patreon and again don't forget to subscribe <laughs> <laughs> see you next time take it easy guys <laughs>